Well, good morning and welcome back to the Johnson Space Center for the final mission status briefing for STS-107. With us today to discuss Columbia's homecoming tomorrow to the Kennedy Space Center is the STS-107 Entry Flight Director, Leroy Kane. Leroy? Thank you, Rob. Well, I, as I think most of you already know, this has been a very successful mission. Um, I just came from the control center and there are a lot of a lot of smiling faces and all the PIs on just about every corner you turn over there. So um, fair to say that that it's uh, exceeded, far exceeded folks' expectations from a science standpoint. So we're very pleased. The uh, the vehicle, Columbia, and uh, and the crew are doing very well today. It's been a quiet day um, with respect to uh, science as we start to ramp down on most of those experiments and put them away. Um, we spent most of our day today getting set up for entry. We did our normal flight control systems check out and, and check out of the RCS. The uh, thrusters that we use, all the systems that we use for entry, we had no problems. The uh, vehicle performed flawlessly today as it has the entire mission. Um, the uh, crew is, as I left the control center, they're finishing up, uh, as I said, with some of the science. They're beginning to work on cabin stow pretty much in earnest now, getting packed up for the trip home tomorrow. The uh, Speaking of tomorrow, we're going to come in tomorrow morning early. I'll be in uh, with the entry team at 1.30 central time. Our first weather briefing will be at 3 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. The deorbit prep, uh, preparation procedures for deorbit and entry tomorrow, we'll start those at 3.15, close the payload bay doors and the deorbit uh, time of ignition for our first opportunity tomorrow is 7.15 a.m. Central Time with a landing at Kennedy Space Center at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. The uh, situation as far as consumables, we have uh, an abundance of consumables. We have essentially five days of capability. With those five days, we have plenty of deorbit opportunities from a trajectory standpoint. We have at least two opportunities to the Kennedy Space Center SLF landing facility uh, daylight opportunities each day. So that's that's all very good and I'm very pleased to could be happier with respect to consumables and trajectory options that we have in front of us. So as things shape up with respect to the first opportunity for tomorrow morning, we will come in, uh, as I said, our first opportunity is on Rev 255 to KSC. The, um, the first pass, uh, if I don't know if you have the graphic, there it is. Um, this will be a very good visual sighting for folks in particular on the west coast as well as uh, in, uh, in mid uh, Arizona, New Mexico area. The times, I believe, I have a time of on the order of 5.55 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time is when we should make landfall there in the Bay Area. It should be a pretty spectacular event if, for folks that have never seen a, a, uh, a shuttle sighting, uh, in particular at night, it's, uh, it's a sight to see, and this should be a, a very good one as well. So we're looking forward to that. Um, the, uh, finally, to the weather, um, the weather at the Kennedy Space Center tomorrow is, uh, we're forecasting uh, scattered clouds, a, a deck at 3,500 feet another deck at 25,000 feet. The uh, winds are out of 300, 10 peak, 15 knots. Um, the second opportunity, the winds are, are uh, forecast to stiffen up just a little bit, but the good news is that uh, if they do, they'll still be more or less down the runway, and the, the winds there would be 310, uh, out of 310, 15 peak, 20 knots. So the weather looking very good at KSC tomorrow. Um, for Sunday's KSC opportunities, the weather continues to look good um, with just a few clouds at 3,500 feet, winds out of 350, again, mostly down the runway, just swinging slightly to the other side, uh, 3504 peak, six knots. So that all looks very good with respect to the weather. We're, we're not working any concerns on the orbiter. The crew's in great shape, as I said, so we're looking forward to coming in tomorrow morning and. Uh, and marching on down to our first opportunity at KSC. And that's all I have, Rob. I'm ready okay. to take questions. Thanks, Leroy. We'll take questions from reporters down at the Kennedy Space Center. Hi, it's Chris Kreidler from Florida today. Do you do anything, or do the astronauts do anything special to secure the living creatures on board, or do they pretty much uh, survive fine in their enclosures for landing? 
The, uh, Chris, I don't know the specific design of the, uh, of the science um, containers that the, uh, that the habitable um, science objectives are in, but I, I can tell you that um, we've flown these kind of experiments before. We have a lot of experience um, with the kind of containers that would be necessary. So we can get you some details on those containers, but um, I think they're pretty well designed for the entire uh, entry phase. This is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press. Um, do you know exactly when the space hab will be sealed? Good morning, Marcia. Yeah, we're going to we're going to close the hatch on the space hab tomorrow morning, um, and we're going to do that. Uh, it's approximately an hour before we get into the deorbit preparation procedures, so it'll be about three between three and four in the morning Central Time tomorrow. Just prior to, um, we'll, we'll do it right after we do some of the final. Uh, preparations in the hab, back out, close the hatch, and then we'll we'll get into our orbit preparation procedures on the orbiter side shortly after that. Oh, great, thank you. And um, given the fact that you may have lost a little bit of tau um, during liftoff, I'm wondering if there's going to be anything different about the entry profile taking that into regard. Uh, no, there isn't. We uh, the engineers and analysts took a very thorough look at the situation with the, uh, the tile on the left wing, and we have no concerns whatsoever, um, and uh, therefore we haven't changed anything with respect to our trajectory design, and uh, there's nothing that we need to do in that regard, so nothing, nothing different. It'll be nominal standard trajectory. Uh, Dan Billett, WESH-TV. Leroy, could you just review what, what the minor damage is to the tile on the left wing? I believe that uh, at this time we can't say with great detail um, the degree of the damage other than all of the analysis suggests that it would be very minor in terms of the amount of tile that might actually be missing or had been removed um, would be very minor. Um, all of the analysis says that uh, we have plenty of margin in those areas in that regard and that the impact could not have been from this particular material significant enough um, to take out any significant amount of tile. So I can't tell you um, inches by inches or depth, but I can tell you we, th we think it's going to be very small. Okay, that's all the questions down at the Kennedy Space Center. We'll close with a quick programming uh, reminder. Our final flight day highlights package will air on NASA television uh, this evening at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Coverage, of course, continues throughout the night and tomorrow through entry and landing and all of the post-landing activities with the astronauts' post-landing news conference down at the Cape about nine hours after Columbia's touchdown. Thanks very much. We'll go back to mission control and coverage of the STS-107 mission. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at live video coming from the payload bay of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Columbia passing uh, just over the Baja Peninsula. You're looking at uh, the Pacific coast of Mexico. Columbia on a southeasterly track that will take it along the uh, Pacific coast of Mexico. Aboard Columbia, the red team is awake at this time. They're having their midday meal taking a break out of uh, turning off all the experiments and getting everything ready for their return home tomorrow morning.
This is Mission Control Houston, Space Shuttle Columbia continuing its track along southern Mexico on the Pacific coast. Central America appearing in your screen in the bottom right hand corner. Space Shuttle Columbia continuing its southeasterly track across the eastern Pacific, just off the coast at this time of uh, Guatemala and El Salvador. This is Mission Control Houston. We're continuing to look at live video from a camera in the payload bay of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Columbia orbiting the Earth over the eastern Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Costa Rica. On the right side of your screen, you can just see the browns that uh, make up the coastline. 